Hi guys, in this video we're going to be talking about transitions, which is the period of time between activities. Alright, so we want to try to make our transitions as quick as possible. Um, so there's a few bits and pieces that we can do to try to make this happen. So the first one, as we know, is the use of our whistle. We like to think that we can blow a whistle once and people will freeze, blow a whistle twice and they'll all come in. Okay, you don't have to use that format. In fact, if all of us are using that format, it might become a little bit confusing. Okay, so come up with something that might be a little bit unique to you, but really easy to remember and really easy to execute. Okay, but the key is to have that whistle and to use it well, to use it effectively. So, when you are giving instructions, should they be in next to you or should they be out and about? Well, it depends what you're doing. Okay, if it's a really important instruction you need to change, then you need to bring them in close. Okay, if you're explaining rules, okay, then again, you need to bring them in close. If you're demonstrating, then you need to bring them in close. Okay, if it's just a one off thing, so you blow your whistle quickly and then they freeze, and then you can say something like, okay, this time, um, if you drop the ball, it is no longer a turnover. If it's a simple rule change like that, then leave them out there. Okay, don't waste time bringing them in, okay, and then having to push them back out. So should they be standing or should they be sitting? Okay, if, if they're going to be standing, um, then it's obviously a little bit quicker for them to come in. Um, however, if they can't control themselves while standing, um, if they're always going to be shifting side to side, okay, if they're going to get distracted easily, um, or maybe if they've got an issue uh, with authority and stuff like that, if it makes them think that they're a little bit bigger than they possibly um, should be thinking, then um, yeah, maybe don't have them standing. Okay, but again, if it's just a short instruction you're giving them, then by all means, getting them in, um, just having them stand is is uh, is a great idea, and it's and it's a quick way. When you should have them sitting is again if you're giving them instruction that's really important. Okay, if you need them all to be able to see, because of course if they're standing, okay, then the people at the back of this group can't actually see what's going on. Um, so the sitting group again, if it's a really important instructions or demonstration, okay, or if you want to, um, if you're telling them off perhaps, if if you're wanting to express your authority over the group, then you might get them to come in and just sit down, because of course you'll be standing, so you can sort of show them who's boss. If you've got equipment out and about, uh, then it's obviously a distraction. It can be a distraction for a lot of people. So just come up with a technique where they can still have the equipment because it takes way too long for the kids to have to have the equipment and then to go and put it away somewhere and then to bring it back. If they can't control themselves, then you might have to do that anyway. Okay, but initially, just give them something to do. So say, okay, with your basketballs, just put them down on the ground and put your foot on it. Okay, or maybe put the put the ball between your feet, something like that. If it's a tennis ball, just put the tennis ball in your pocket. All right, just have come up with something. It could be unique. Okay, so that they remember. Maybe okay, hold your tennis ball um, against your chin, or put it you know between under here, perhaps something like that. Okay, so come up with a plan um, where it's not in their hands. Okay, and it's it's not a distraction because if it's basketball they'll be dribbling the basketball and it's really noisy okay if it's tennis ball they'll be chucking it up and down and it's a really big distraction likewise with you you don't want any equipment in your hands you don't want to be playing with anything okay so get rid of everything from your hands get rid of everything from their hands okay and then your transition will be a lot quicker when you're giving out the instructions, they just need to be short and sharp, okay? The old saying of keep it simple stupid is a really, really good thing to remember. Okay, so just pick key words from your instructions that you need to give, okay? Again, if you're giving a demonstration, just key words from the demonstration and just nut those out. If you can, sort of make them rhyme, okay? Make them rememberable, um, make them memorable, I should say, um, so that the students can go away with that in their heads. If you give them too many words, too many instructions, they can't figure out what's the most important parts of it okay and then they'll get confused and they'll have to come back and you have to do it again and then send them out again and again our old PE our time on task really starts to decrease where should the student sit or stand okay so student placement is really important when you're giving instructions obviously the Sun is going to be a big deal so make sure that you are looking into the Sun okay do not allow your students to look into the Sun okay it's not very nice so you take one for the team there 
if you can try to get them into a setup where everyone can see you, um, then we're not going to have that issue of people standing behind other people and people not being able to see oh, your demonstration. Man. Okay, when you're demonstrating something, they need to see your full body, not just your upper body. So if you can get them in a single sort of file or line, okay, whatever shape you want to use is great. But yeah, try not to have them in, in a bunch if you can. Okay, it's fine if you're giving verbal instructions to have them in a bunch, but for a demonstration, okay, you could possibly have them in some sort of corner. All right, so that they're all looking into you. So in these images here, the star is, of course, you, the talent, the teacher, um, or the coach. Okay, so you can see that in each of these scenarios, the blue, okay, that's the group of kids, they're all looking um, in towards you. Okay, we've discussed this before, but the circle, you know, if you've got a circle there, you should be part of the circle as opposed to being in the middle of the circle. If you're in the middle, you've got your back to people and anything could be going on. Okay, so there's just a few tips to try to make your transitions as smooth and as quick as possible. Again, we don't want kids in there for too long. We want them out there doing activity, getting reps in, and learning the skill better. Awesome. Thanks, guys. See ya.